Welcome to Meet the Boss TV, I'm Anna Gilligan. In this program, I'm at Google headquarters in Mountain View, California, to speak with Leanne Hornsey, a VP of People Operations, about how she manages some of the brightest minds in the world. We really try to make this a place where people want to be. And I have to say, it doesn't happen by accident, it does happen by design. read that Google only hires people that they believe could be innovative thinkers. Why is that so important to the company? Well, I don't think it's quite true to say we only hire people who are innovative thinkers. Um, we certainly only hire people who we consider to be incredible talent. And, and part of that talent could be about innovative thinking. Could you tell me a little bit about the hiring process at Google? I mean, it's kind of, it's like the holy grail of places to work. <laughs> and you hear so many legendary stories about how many interviews people had. What is the process? When I was hired four and a half years ago, I had 14 interviews across two different continents, um, and it really was quite grueling, and it took you know, several months. Nowadays, we tend to try to limit our number of interviews to between four, six maximum, possibly, possibly eight. Um, but the reason that we have so many interviews is that we believe very strongly that we should hire through consensus. So for example, if I was gonna hire you to work for me, I couldn't just make the decision that you seem good and that we could get on. We'd ask somebody who would work for you to, to interview you and a couple of your um, would-be peers. So we believe very strongly in making 360 degree decisions around people that we hire. And the reason that we do that is we believe that each and every hire we make is probably the most important people decision that we're going to take. We're very we're very proud of our culture here and we, and we want to protect it and we want to make sure that we don't dilute it. So we put a good deal of effort into making sure that everybody we hire would be accretive to the culture. So what is the culture that each employee has to fit into so well? We try very, very hard to not be hierarchical, to be reasonably democratic in our decision making, to be very informal but formal when it comes to how we do things in terms of our decisions. So we never make decisions on the fly, for example. We always use data, we're always very rigorous in our thoughts. But we're less rigorous and less formal in the way we dress, the way we eat, the way we act. Leanne Hornsey joined Google in 2006 and heads up human resources for the sales arm of the company. Google has become such a phenomenon that its name has become a verb. Now this presents a unique challenge to Leanne, who has to keep up with its growing staffing needs without becoming bureaucratic. I asked her how she does it and where a lot of companies go wrong when it comes to human resources. I think it's very difficult. Um, I, I think I'd be lying to you <laughs> if I said, oh, it's easy. We can, you know, we can scale to 50,000 people and still be innovative and still be creative. No, you have to work at it. You definitely have to work at it. We, we do lots of things to make sure that we don't become bureaucratic by default. So one of the things is we look very, very carefully at the number of levels we have in the organization. We really try to keep that tight and light. So every quarter or so, we have what we call bureaucracy buster, which is basically anybody can write in to um, our senior guys and say, look, this thing is driving me mad. It's slowing down. I can sense bureaucracy. I can sense lots of form filling. And we do our very, very best to take those ideas and eradicate the bureaucracy. So we work hard at it. Um, and our senior guys put a lot of time into it. When you said that you try to limit the number of layers so it doesn't yeah. become bureaucratic, yeah. what's that? Is there a magic number where you say, if we go beyond this, we're in trouble? We've toyed with having magic numbers and we've found that that really doesn't work because some of our organizations are very, you know, they're big, they're thousands of people and some of our organizations are hundreds of people. So we've played with magic numbers um, and we've thrown them in the bin and we've decided that really we just need to take um, more of a common sense view to this. But I think it would be, we'd be pretty uncomfortable if the number of layers got into double figures that that would feel very uncomfortable for us. Oftentimes there's an issue in organizations, someone's a great individual contributor, but it's a very different job to then manage the people that are yes. doing that job you yes. did so well. Yeah. How do you spot those people who will become right. great leaders and managers and make sure that there's a smooth transition? So I think I've gone on record um, saying that my biggest worry at Google, my biggest difficulty at Google is managing um, talent. My problem is <laughs> I hire brilliant people. So, you know, 95, 99% of my people are high talent. They really, really are. The people here are good. 
So we don't use traditional methods. It would be wholly inappropriate when you have a talent pool such as, as Google has to have high potential programs, for example. So what we tend to do, and we do a lot of it, we encourage a great deal of rotation and mobility. So for example, um, in the sales organization, we've had roughly about a thousand people move jobs over, over this last sort of three quarters. And they either move jobs permanently or they move jobs to go and see for a period of time if they'd like to work in X, Y or Z area. We also bring people together into project teams working on cross-functional big company issues so that people can build skills and talents outside of their own, their, their own sort of function and their own area of expertise. So we work very, very hard on giving very bright people additional skills, additional learning and additional knowledge. And of course, we also have the normal promotion processes and all that stuff. We also spend an awful lot of time preparing people for management. Um, you know, I've often, got, <laughs> I've often said that, you know, I was a manager for about 15 years before I knew how to do it. And it's often when you get very, very good individual contributors who are used to doing it themselves, who are highly motivated, it's very hard for them to manage people because that's a very big transition. So we put lots of support in place. We have mentoring programs, you know, all the stuff you would expect, a lot of leadership programs. We run um, what we call career gurus where we give advice to would-be uh, would managers. We have lower expectations of managers when they're first in the job. Um, we don't suddenly drop them in and say, right, we expect you to be able to do the same as someone who's been managing for 10 years. So we recognize very, very um, clearly that it's quite a difficult transition. And some people don't want to make it. So for example, in engineering, a lot of people stay as individual contributors and they're perfectly happy with that. And our pay scales and our promotion scales absolutely allow for that to happen. Now you said it took you 15 years to realize how to become a good manager. Me personally, yes. Yes, <laughs> what, what was, was there kind of a light bulb moment? Yes. What, was, what did you learn that made that switch into good management? Yeah, there was a light bulb moment. Um, and I think it was very much about really believing rather than just saying that my success was linked with the success of my people. Um, I'd always been an individual contributor who sort of succeeded. And so my whole life was geared, my whole working life was geared towards what I did. And I had a light bulb moment when I realized it wasn't about me anymore and that my success was absolutely linked to the success of the team. And that absolutely changed the way I managed. I mean, it literally turned it 180 degrees. And I read that you said that you measure people with positives, not negatives. For example, you don't keep track of sick days. Why is that so important at Google? I guess because we believe that people are grown-ups and adults and you know, they'll do the right thing and that we don't have to be monitoring them and measuring them and watching their every move. And in my experience, that's right. You know, I mean, so for example, if you just take my team, I never look at their holiday, I never look at their sick, I never look at what time they come in or at what time they leave. I do look at their output. That's what I'm interested in. How they get to that output, why should I bother? You know, they're grown-ups. Do you believe in a work-life balance? And if so, how is it encouraged here? Work-life balance is such, such an interesting subject. Um, yes, I do believe people need work-life balance. I really do but I believe it's different for every individual. So I actually think it would be paternalistic and wrong to tell people that they have to leave the office at three, four, five or whatever, okay? I think people are grown-ups and they have to make decisions for themselves around how they work, when they work. And it's a little bit like how I answered the question earlier. I don't check on my people when they come to work, when they leave work. If people want, so for example, if, if somebody who works for me wants to go to the dentist or wants to go to the doctor or wants to go pick up their kids or whatever, I don't even notice it and nor would I expect them to ask. So I absolutely feel that we concentrate on output, not on how many hours you're at work. So work-life balance is a different thing to every individual, but yes, of course we care about it and we leave it to the individual to decide. So you keep mentioning the, this focus on output. Yeah. Um, so how frequent are the review, review processes um, and kind of what's the process for that? Everybody in the organization, and I say everybody, but it never is everybody, right? But <laughs> the vast majority of the people in the organization do have quarterly goals. So they'll sit down with their manager and maybe with their team and say, right, this is what I think I'm, I'm going to do this quarter. Does it sound right? And let's work out the measures around that. And then every quarter that will be reviewed. And we review it quite formally, you know, we, we take it very, very seriously. We are a performance-related um, culture. 
So the manager will review how the individual's done, sit down with the individual, they'll have a long conversation, and the managers will all get together as well to calibrate how they feel about the whole teams. So we take that process very, very seriously, and it does impact compensation, et cetera, as you would expect. Now, for several years, Google has topped Fortune's list of the 100 best companies to work for. What are the, the traits or the characteristics of Google that you think places it so high year after year? So over the last six weeks, I've been talking to a lot of people who are new to the company. And I've sat down with them and I've said, what do you like, what don't you like? What did you find that was as you would expect? What did you find that was different? And universally, Universally, in 100% of cases, people have said to me, we love the people. So I have to say, and I know I'm un utterly boring around this, it comes around to, down to hiring. I think if you hire people who really want to work on shared goals and shared products and shared things, who you feel will be accretive to the culture, it really, really impacts how people feel about the organization. And of course, we, we also do do a lot of things, you know, so, you know, there's all the stuff that people might consider the fluff, like the free food, like the soft areas, like the fact that we don't check people's working hours or sickness particularly. We, we really try to make this a place where people want to be. And I have to say, it doesn't happen by accident. It does happen by design. For more fantastic interviews directly related to your business, be sure to explore Meet the Boss TV.